it's the closest thing to a rideable tsunami there is because there's no back to the wave. It's just the whole ocean behind it. It, it. it is the most beautifully perfect wave I've ever seen. What I want to sort of just um, induce people to do is to Google uh, and search for some of the mm -hmm. epic rides that you've taken that also alerted the world to the fact that something crazy was going on. So, you know, with Laird Hamilton, a very famous uh, alert that went out to the planet was this uh, photograph of him in Tahiti, which must have... The Millennium did, Wave. Did you want to talk about how that affected you? I mean, Laird was my was a superhero to me, uh, even up to that point. And this was 2000. And Laird was known, is known as riding and kind of like pushing the limits of big wave riding where people didn't think it could go. Um, part, I think that's why I'm kind of inspired to follow in those footsteps. Like, and it might be a little different approach, but for Laird, when he rode that wave in 2000, he just kind of like, blew the door open on what was possible. So what, what, what wave was it? Talk, is This is Tahiti? Yeah, so this is in Tahiti, French Polynesia. Most beautiful day ever. There's this wave called Teahupo. People call it Chopu. People call it Chopes. And it's this wave that breaks in six feet of water on a shallow reef, comes from the depths of the ocean. It's really deep on the other side. And what makes this wave so unique is it can displace the entire ocean. And instead of being instead of standing up vertically, it just folds over. So it's almost like it's the closest thing to a rideable tsunami there is because there's no back to the wave. It's just the whole ocean behind it. It, it. it is the most beautifully perfect wave I've ever seen. And and I'm there are two waves that have captivated me just visually, and they're the exact opposite of each other. So this, and how should I say it? Should I not say Chopu? Well, you can say it however you want. What does I it mean? mean? Can you translate? It's got a good name. Oh, yeah. This is this is great. So Teahupo, yeah. Chopu, is um, translates to broken skulls. Yeah, and it's not because of the wave, but that area is like culturally significant. They call it the end of the road. It's where the road ends, um, and that's where that wave is right at the end. But back in the day, there used to be really big battles in Tahiti. I see, and um, people's skulls were put on stakes, and they would right. be stuck in the sand there. And it just kind of fit perfect that one of the gnarliest waves that could stick you on a stake is just maybe 200, 300 yards offshore. It's a fairly shallow reef. So shallow, so sharp razors. Just Ooh. imagine razor blades on the bottom. You touch it barely. It's just you're, you get ripped apart. And a classic Tahitian tradition is you lime them after to kill any bacteria because the reefs are so alive there that it's yeah. really easy to get staph infection. Yikes. And so instead of using anything that's like by modern medicine standards or less painful, they lime you. And uh, it is hor it's like putting acid in your wounds. It hurts so bad because, you know, the acidic, um, uh, the nature of limes are pretty acidic. Yeah. And so it just feels it's killing everything in there, but it's also stinging horribly bad. And there's nothing worse when you get cut. You try to hide it from like all your friends and the local Tahitians because they see you like lime and people it's it's hilarious find so much pleasure in seeing you just like squirm as they like lime your back and it's good because it kills uh yeah any staff that could possibly take you but at the very same time it's miserable you already go through a horrible experience and then you have to do it again <laughs> okay well this th this wave is not the tallest but it's one of the heaviest waves in the world in terms of, in terms of the mass of water yeah i mean it kind of defies like belief when people first see it especially in person it's not that the wave necessarily it's not like the wave gets displaced as it comes in and hits the reef and typically what happens is water is shot vertically and right. that's what creates a tall wave there's a back to the wave it's usually half the size of the front of the wave but because there's all that mass pushing behind it but at chopu the way it hits the reef, it just shoots the lip forward and the whole ocean's behind it and it draws all the water off the reef back into the ocean. And so you're surfing at below sea level. If you're riding a 30 foot wave there, yeah. you're 30 feet below sea level. You're in like a pit and you can see the water going back up the reef in front of it you. It almost doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, it's just, it's a freak of nature and certain waves do that, but this one's the king of it. It's the best 
it's I like to call it the most perfect closeout on the planet because in all the photos you see of it, it looks like this perfect wave, yeah. and it is for a little bit. But as you're riding, there's a right hander that's coming at you, so there's a wave that's equal in size that's going to close out. Is that what to blows make... out all that mist that at, right at the end? So that's called spit. Okay. You know, when you see a breaking wave as it barrels, it'll shoot like a cannon, and all yeah. that water. It's the compression of water. These big waves, waves in general, are like cannons or like um, guns. So when you're riding in the tube, you can feel air. It's a vortex. Right. It's a vortex. And so it's sucking air in like a jet engine, like, and then the wave, there's so much water moving, the air can't escape. So it goes the least resistance, which is back out the tube. And it explodes and it shoots chunks of water that can knock you off your board probably hundreds of pounds of like water that are like shooting you and it hurts really bad like it feels certain waves it feels so good like getting just it's the only time it feels good to be spat on <laughs> well you said this thing to me about barrels that i never thought of and maybe it's a commonplace in surfing but i'd never heard it which is that a barrel is a unique experience uh, because of you said something about the only time that um yeah well Riding inside a tube, a barrel, a, a wave, basically the hollow part of the wave as it pitches over, it's unique because it's the only way we can breathe underwater without any other breathing apparatus. So You're that was amazing. And you feel like a fish for a second, you know? And there's something about waves that break and the negative ions they produce that, you know, make you feel so good. So you yeah. can imagine being in this kind of capsule or this vortex you're so focused on making it it's all that's on the front of your mind that there's a moment when nothing else exists and time slows down it's like you really are almost i don't know if accessing more parts of your brain or what it is but what feels like 10 what is four seconds feels like a minute that's amazing and you're just in there and and i'm watching water droplets move by me at like matrix speed everything looks like the matrix and if you're really calm and and you're really comfortable, you can look, you have time to like look around and absorb all this information. And then all of a sudden as it spits and you come out of the tube, it's like life just starts going back to normal speed. And you realize how life fast life moves because in there it's like, you have all the time in the world it feels like. And um, it's, it's what, it's probably the pinnacle of what you could do surfing.